Perfection cannot be formed from imperfection. The flawed birthing the unflawed. So from nothingness, he spoke. Amidst syllables and breath, a world appeared. A home. Seas and depths for the aquatic. Atmospheres and height for the aviary. And set at the heart. Set at the middle. He created a garden. Light was seen. Life began. And from that which was nothing, perfection opened its eyes to behold its creator. Those same syllables and breaths, now fully fledged beings, equipped with the capacity to love, to live, and to choose. But in a moment, everything changed. What was once perfect was now broken. What was once whole now stood separated. Where access was once unlimited, a barrier was forged. And for generations, this veil remained. And though love hadn't lost, the world yet grown for perfection once more. We were cursed to live on this side of the veil. But hope was promised. He was promised. And when we most expected divorce and disownment, when we knew that a return to nothingness was our fate, he came to walk again with creation, to give a glimpse of what was and could be. The veil would be torn, a savior destined to wear our suffering.
is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and somebody give him praise, who is to come. Who is to come. Come on, give him some, give him a shout of praise. Father, we're so incredibly thankful for your holiness and the opportunity to worship you in this moment to celebrate Easter for what it truly is, the fact that you went to death, hell and the grave, but you were resurrected three days later. God, we celebrate a living God that walks with us and loves us daily. In Jesus' name, one more shout of praise. Come on, give him everything you got. Welcome to church. Did I already say that? <laughs> Listen, we're gonna jump right back into worship in a moment. Stay on your feet. I just wanna seriously just take a moment, hit the pause button, welcome you to church. Happy Easter. My name is Dale and I am your campus pastor. And I can already tell you're excited to be here. Whether you're in the room, we have people online. Thank you so much for tuning in as well. We've been having all day, we've had people that this is their first time back since COVID started a year ago. The family's back together. Isn't that cool? Absolutely amazing. But maybe this is your first time. Maybe you're new here. And we would love to know that you're here. And just an easy way you can do it in a room this large is in the seat back in front of you, there's a Connect card. If you'll fill that out, drop it off at our Connect Center on your way out in the lobby, uh, it'll let us know. If you're online, just hover over that QR code that you're looking at right now. And that's a digital Connect card. You can let us know that you're here. Right before, Jesus was on the cross, but right before he breathed his last breath, he said three words. He said, it is finished. And I'm so glad those three words weren't, it is over. He had finished his work, but let me tell you, it was just getting started. Because he, right there, he breathed his last breath. He met death. He defeated death. And three days later, most of you know what happened. He was resurrected. He experienced this resurrection and immediately offers it to us, which I think is absolutely amazing that we can experience this resurrected life. As I said, we're going to enter right back into worship. But I want you to worship him for who he is, what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to continue to do. And the fact that we can be born again, we can step into that resurrected life, and our story is just getting started. Our testimony is what's going to defeat the enemy. So let's pray. And I want to worship him as a family with everything that we have. Father, we're so incredibly thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus. And God, I'm thankful that he came and died, but I'm so much more thankful that he, was, he rose again. He was resurrected. He's alive and well. And God, we can worship him today, He's sitting at your right hand, interceding for us. And God, that story that we have, that you keep adding to daily as you whisper in our hearts and you lead us down this journey, that testimony is being built. That's how we overcome, by the blood of that lamb and by the word of that testimony. So God, we celebrate you and we're gonna worship you in a big, big way. If you believe that, and if you love him, give him all the praise that you have with your hands, with your mouth. Shout of praise and let's worship him. Come on, guys. Come on. Bought with blood and washed in water. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We're singing because He lives. I can face. I can face tomorrow. Yes, Jesus. Be. All fear is gone. All fear is gone. Because I know. Because I know. Oh, He holds my future. And life is worth the living. Just because he lives and life is worth the living one more time in life. Yes, life is worth the living just because he lives. Come on, celebrate that today. Because he lives, there is life infused into this building today. Dead things can walk. Dormant things can be picked up today because of he, him living. Amen. 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 It's so great to worship with you today. Why don't you go ahead and take your seats. Hey guys, I'm Jared, this is my wife Haley, and we wanna welcome you to church. And whether you've been a part of our church for a decade like we have, or today is your very first time, we want you to know that you are family. And our heart for you today is that you experience God in a brand new way and are inspired to take a next step in your faith. So listen, here's a few things we have going on that we believe can help you take these steps to grow. Maybe you've been coming for a while and are finally deciding to really dive in and get involved. Or today is your first time, but you know you want this to be home. Connect Class is the perfect place to start. Right, so we want you to hear the heart and the vision of our church. But honestly, it's just such a great opportunity for you to meet some of our campus staff and hear about how you can really start getting connected right here. All you have to do is sign up online, or if you're ready to do it right now, you can take out your camera app, hover over the QR code, and sign up at the link it takes you to. Both childcare and lunch are provided, so make sure to let us know you're coming. Wednesday, April 14th at 6.30 p.m., we're taking a break from our normal midweek schedule. Usually we'd walk through a study and connect with people in smaller groups, but on that night, we wanna invite everyone out for a midweek night of worship. And if you're not excited yet, this Friday, April 9th, City Hope Music is releasing its very first single, Spirit Speak. We believe this song is speaking so clear in this season, and if it speaks to you, share it with someone. You'll be able to listen just about everywhere you can stream music. Look, today is special. It's Easter, and we're hoping that you're enjoying your experience. But really quick, we wanna give you a look at a series that we've been excited about for a little while, so check this out. There's a story in the New Testament that finds Peter in the months following the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It had been 49 days since he'd put himself back on a boat. He even picked up that old net and had started calling himself a fisherman again. It had been 49 days since Jesus found him on that boat again. And now here he was, somehow the leader of all of these people. A leader without vision, without purpose, and without a plan. But Peter had something better. He had a promise. With the sound of a mighty rushing wind and flames of fire, the Spirit came. Believers, once muted with the fear of being condemned to crosses and coliseums, descended the stairs of the upper room, entering this world filled with the power of another. 
What would cause 120 to become 3,120 in a matter of minutes? What would cause a coward like Peter, once too fearful to be truthful to a young servant girl, to throw open the windows of the upper room and create a sound that persecution, imprisonment, or exile still cannot silence? What still promises to enter our world and clothe us with wind and fire? And listen, let me just tell you, you've already heard it, but let me just say it again from our team, from my family, from every single person here, happy Easter. Man, I'm so glad that you are with us, that you're worshiping with us this weekend, whether you're in person here or at one of our campuses, or if you're watching online, I'm just glad that we get to celebrate a risen savior together, right? That we are in, one, yeah, we are together. And we are celebrating Jesus Christ, and that's what this is all about, and I'm so glad that you're with us this weekend. Uh, it's crazy to me to think that just last year, a year ago, um, we were all in homes. Isn't that wild to think that just a year ago, we were in the middle, or kind of in the beginning of shutdown, and Easter looked very, very differently. As a matter of fact, it was the very first Easter I was ever at home on Easter Sunday morning with my family. So it's a little bit kind of cool. I don't really necessarily want it to ever happen again, not saying that, but it was kind of wild that it was completely different. But now here we are, we're gathering together. I'm seeing faces for the first time in over a year and it's awesome. And maybe you're not quite ready to be back in person and that's okay, but I believe that we're getting there, right? Isn't that awesome? We're getting there and there is just, yeah, come on. It's exciting because there is nothing like being together and worshiping together. I had so many conversations last night just about how different it is to worship together in, in person, right? Online is great and it's incredible, but there's just nothing like being with each other and, and just being in the presence of God with our family. It's just incredible. So I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you're with us. Um, and you may not know this, or some of you may, if you've been around, if you're part of our family, but about a month ago, I actually had COVID. Um, and so I went through two weeks of quarantine where you know, my wife literally put me in a she put baby in a corner um, and she like locked me up for two weeks, would not let me come out. And you know, I'm the hero. So of course I'll do that for my family. I will take one for the team and I will do that. And she was an absolute trooper. She held everything together, but I'm an introvert. And so I honestly assumed that that would be the best two weeks of my entire life. I really did. I thought this is, this is what I've dreamed about. Literally, and especially now that I have three kids that I love dearly. But I just thought, this is what dreams are made of right here. I get two weeks in my own home without all the other stuff. It's incredible. But here's what ended up happening after just a couple of days. I could hear them in the other room. I could hear them. I could hear the laughter and the joy. I could hear the excitement. I could just hear life. Like I could just hear normal life happening. And after two or three days, I started really missing that. And it actually got pretty miserable. Boredom, just all of it, just, just I wanted to be with my family. We wound up kind of in the hallway at one point, having, having dinner, sitting on the floor, like 10 feet apart, like just so I could have a little bit of a sense of what's going on, but I ended up missing what was going on in the rest of my home. And I don't know if you've ever felt that way before where you were kind of on the outside looking in, like there's a door, there's something that separates you from all this life and all this good and there's something new and you don't really understand it. And that's very much what I felt like. Like there's so much happening on the other side of this door and I'm missing it. You know, a, another place that, that this happens is when you fly. 
if you ever fly and they, they walk you through those really nice seats <laughs> to back where all the normals sit, you know? And then, and then they do this thing where they, they draw this little curtain and you're like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, I wanna know what's happening up there. Like what's up with hot towels on an air, like on a flight, why do we need that? Like all of a sudden I'm like, I wanna know what's going on out there. I'm missing something, I want in on that. And maybe you've experienced this where you're kind of on the outside looking in when you started a new job, right? And everybody knows everybody and there's all these inside jokes, there's all these secrets that you don't know yet and you, you're new to the job and you have no idea or maybe new to a school. You know, and you're like, all these people know each other, but they don't, I don't know them. And I just feel like I'm on the outside looking in or maybe church. Maybe you come to church and you just feel like, man, there's, there's new language, there's new words I don't know. And this feels a little bit odd. I, I'm, I'm kind of an outsider looking in. Like, I, I wanna know, I wanna be there, but I just, I feel so outside. Or maybe you've recently moved to Alabama and this is a whole new world to you. Right, the great state of Alabama is a whole new world and you're trying to figure some things out and you wish that there was some sort of a book or a guide that would just kind of get you along a little bit quicker. Like how in the world do people here use Roll Tide for everything? <laughs> like just, could we just have a cheat sheet somewhere that would help us understand how someone could have a seven minute conversation and use Roll Tide in 700 different ways? Right, and if you're an outsider coming in, it's like these things just don't, you're, you're an outsider looking in and I wonder if you've ever felt that way. Maybe sometimes you feel that way with God. Whether you're a Christ follower or you're not, even if you're not a Christ follower or even if you are a Christ follower, there are times where we feel like we are very much on the outside looking in going, man, I, I know there's more to this whole thing. I see it in that person. I see it in that person. I feel it when I come to church, but, but I'm still on the outside and I'm looking in and I want more, but I don't really know what that looks like. And this was literally the story of the Old Testament. For the entire Old Testament, this is the way the people of God interacted with God. They were very much on the outside looking in until Easter Sunday. And Easter changed everything. Easter was an invitation to life. Easter was an invitation to enter into life with God that had, that had not existed in thousands and thousands of years. Easter is an invitation to a full life, to a meaningful life, a joyful life, a hopeful life. Easter is that invitation. And to really explain this today, what I wanna do is I wanna take this really small detail from the story of the crucifixion and I wanna make a big deal about it because I think it's important. I think it's something for us to lean into today so that we understand this. So to, so to kind of to kick this thing off, I'm gonna to go to Matthew 27. Um, and just to kind of set it up, this is in the middle of the crucifixion story. Jesus is literally hanging on the cross. So he's been through all of the, all the things that most of us kind of know Right? He's been through the beatings, he's been, through the, the, been nailed to the cross and he's hanging there. And at this point, he's been hanging for about three hours. So here's where he's at. And again, this is right in the middle of the narrative, the crucifixion narrative. And Matthew gives us this one little detail that I wanna point out. Okay, so look at this in Matthew 27. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. So for three o'clock, it was complete darkness. Uh, for three hours. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Now, before I just kind of bebop on past this, we ha I just have to stop and point out how staggering of a statement that is, that the Son of God hanging on a cross would say that. And it's because in these three hours of darkness, it wasn't just dark, it was also a metaphor of what's happening, that Jesus is literally taking on your sin and my sin. And in that moment, it's darkness that God turned his back because of all that sin that was been put on Jesus. That's a sobering statement, that God turned his back on his son for you and I. And then in verse 50, we see the moment 
We see the moment that Jesus gave up his life for you. Look at what it says. Then Jesus shouted out again and he released his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. All of a sudden, all of earth responded to this moment. Everything shook. Everything changed. But the one detail that I want to pull out is simply this, is that the curtain in the sanctuary temple was torn in two from top to bottom, that God himself literally ripped that curtain in half. No man could have done it because it was from top to bottom. What an interesting detail that God said he literally ripped this. And you may not really understand the the significance of that. You know, in our culture, in our world, like we don't really get that. But if you were a first century Jewish reader, you would have been, that would have been one of the most shocking things you could have ever heard. So Matthew takes us out of the action of the story and he kind of transports us from Golgotha to right in the heart of the city to the temple to tell us this very important detail. Now to really unpack it, I want to do a quick, as quick as I can, I want to do a quick little origin story on the curtain. Okay, because I think for us to just grab hold of this, it's really, really important. So if we were to go all the way back to the very beginning, Genesis 1, when God created everything, they were in paradise, right? It's Eden, paradise. And what made this paradise is that Adam and Eve, humanity literally walked with God. There was communion with God. There was nothing between them. There was nothing separating them. They were in absolute paradise because they were with God until Genesis 3 when sin entered. And when sin entered, it created a division. It created a separation between humanity and God himself. And there was no way to bridge that gap. There was no way. And there was an immediate separation between God and man. But God wanted to be connected to his people. So we fast forward a couple thousand years and God provided a way for them to connect. And we call it the tabernacle. Actually, he called it the tabernacle, which means the place of dwelling. So God was saying like, this is where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be close to you. I'm gonna be here with you. You can't necessarily commune with me. You can't necessarily like walk into my presence, but I'm with you, I'm here. We're just not connected, we're at a distance within the tabernacle, and it was kind of this tent, because if you remember, some of us will remember, even even if you're not familiar, you'll think back to movies and stories you've heard of Moses and the the wilderness years of this tabernacle was like a pop-up shop, it was a tent. And they would just travel from place to place and they would pop this thing up and it was actually massive and it was ornate and it was beautiful. But God created it, provided this as a way to connect with his people. But right in the center, or toward the end, actually, of the tabernacle was a room called the Holy of Holies. And that was the place that God's presence dwelled. That's where he was. Let me show you a quick picture just so you kind of have have some idea. So this is kind of a drawing, and you can see the high priest down there posing for this photo. Um, But right here, you see this curtain, and this room in the back is the Holy of Holies. This is where the presence of God was. And this guy... And all of his glam and all of his stuff, he was the only one that could walk into this room. Out of all of the children of Israel, out of every single one of them, he was the only one that could walk in and he could only do it one time a year. And he would go in on the day of atonement and make sacrifice for all of the people of God one time a year. But God was close to them, but he just wasn't walking with them. But he was with them, he was there, but they were still so disconnected. It goes on to tell us, and actually even Jewish historians tell us that this curtain was massive. It was 60 feet wide by 30 feet tall. They say that it was four inches thick. Think about that, this was a fabric curtain that was four inches thick. And this curtain was the perfect representation of the separation that sin had caused. That God is there, I just can't always get to him. He's there, but I can't get to him. Why? Because of the sin. Because of the separation that sin had caused. And this curtain lived on. 
And even after this tabernacle, and then they built Solomon's temple, and it was destroyed and later rebuilt, and the curtain just became part of it, generation after generation after generation, that even in the day of Jesus, right in the temple, there was a curtain, and God's presence was behind the curtain. He was with them, but they were disconnected until Easter Sunday. And when Jesus died, the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world, when Jesus died 1400 years after the curtain was created, God took it like this. And I just imagine that as painful as that moment was, God looked forward to just ripping that thing apart. And when he did, Matthew even said he ripped it in two. Just the picture of that is even a doorway All of a sudden he rips that thing in half so that you and I can enter into the presence of God, so that you and I can walk back into paradise. Paradise has been reopened. We can experience God's presence. Now, why? Because of what Jesus Christ did. Look at at this right here. Jesus eliminated what kept us separated from God. Jesus himself eliminated the only thing the, all, the singular only thing that could ever separate you from a loving God, Jesus has already destroyed it. The sin, the shame, the fear, the hurt, the mistakes, the past, the problems, none of that stuff will ever keep you from God. Why? Because Jesus Christ destroyed the only thing that can keep you separated from God's love. The only thing that can keep you from entering into that, that communion, that paradise-like relationship that we read about in Genesis. God with you, God providing hope for you and joy and love and peace. What's left for you and I to do is simply enter in because that's really what Easter is. If you, if you imagine that curtain being ripped in two as a massive doorway being opened between you and God, all of a sudden the invitation on Easter is simply to enter in. There's nothing there that separates, but here's the thing. Here's the reality. Is that we're still fallen, broken, and sinful people. And what we do is we like to redecorate. It's so crazy to me that so often the things that God tears down, we tend to rebuild. The things that God does in our life, we tend to undo. And what so many of us do is that even though God has opened this doorway and this path and he has said, enter in, that's it. It's all been eliminated, just step in. What we do is we create our own curtains from bottom to top. And we raise these curtains up, these things that separate us from God, that God did not place there, we place there, that keep us from stepping in. And my guess is most of us have a curtain in our life that's keeping us from fully experiencing all that God has for us. Because there's a life that many of us have not fully tapped into yet. There are parts, there are compartments, there are areas of our life that we have not given God access to yet. We've got a curtain and we're like, no, 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 not that part. And then for some of us, you walk in today and you're, there is a curtain between you and God and you're saying, absolutely not, I'm not good enough. You know, maybe it's your past and you walk in on a day like today and you just think, you know what, this, this is great, Easter's awesome, but you just, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my past. You don't know my mistakes. You don't know the destructive patterns that have been lived out in my life. Like you just don't know how bad the mistakes, the failures, you just don't know. And I'm telling you, there's nothing that separates you, you from God unless you put that curtain up. Because what he wants to do is he wants you to pull that curtain down and step in, enter into his presence. Your past does not keep you from entering into his presence. For some of us, it's maybe it's sin. Maybe it's deep and it's dark and there's some unconfessed sin. Maybe even you're a Christ follower and you look at other believers and you go, man, there's so much life in them. There's so much joy. There's so much happiness. But you know, deep down, there's this, there's this compartment. There's this secret thing that you're, you're hanging on to and you've got this curtain in your life. And God said, if you'll just give me that sin, if you'll just hand that thing over, if you'll just pull that curtain down, then you can step into that life that I've promised you. But as long as you hold on to that thing, 
you're never going to be able to fully step into and enter into his promise for you. For some, it may be your pride. It may be your pride. You may think that you don't need all of this. You can figure out life. You can figure out how to have that all on your own. You don't need God. You got this, your own, your stubbornness, your pride. You just think you can figure this out. And what it's done today is it's created. You've literally lifted up this curtain between you and God and you can never fully experience the power of God until you pull that curtain down. For some, it's performance. You think, you think it's all about you earning. It's all about you doing. It's all about you being better than somebody else or you being you're the, the, the best person, the most, the most moral person. It's all about perfectionism. It's all about doing the right things to earn God's love. And what it's doing is you think you're on the inside and you're not, you've been deceived. You're on the outside and there's a curtain between you and the full life that God has for you. Because you think that it's all about you earning love. And I've lived there before. I've gone in and out of seasons like that where I thought I've got to do all the right things. I've got to be the right person. I've got to, I've got to be the most holy and the best and all this stuff. And that's going to get God to accept me. No, no, no. God already accepts you. That's just a curtain now that you've created that's keeping you from experiencing God. My guess is for a lot of us, especially in this part of the country, the curtain that we've put up is our heritage. It's our heritage because we think that because of where we live and the values that we hold, that we're all good. We think because a parent or a grandparent raised us in a Christian home, we went to church, we gave them some offerings, we have the right values, we do some of the right things, we have our kids in church, we check all of the boxes, we think, we've been deceived to think that we've already entered in, but I'm telling you, that is a curtain that is keeping you from actually experiencing God's presence. Many of you think you're Christians and some of you are not. You're on the outside of a veil and you've been deceived to think that you're already in and you're not in. You think that believing in Jesus is enough. The Bible says in James 2 that even the demons believe in Jesus. No, no, no. It's more than believing in Jesus. It's actually allowing him to make a difference in your life and change you. And if, let's just be real, in the deep south, a whole lot of people claim Jesus, but he's made almost no difference in their life whatsoever. They look just like everybody else. That doesn't make you a Christian. And there's a lot of, I, I live this way. I grew up in church. I thought it was all about doing the right things and saying the right things, maybe posting the right things, maybe having the right values. And that would make me good. That's me stepping into God. No, 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 There's so much more that God wants to do, but it involves you believing and receiving. It involves you stepping in. It involves you saying, hey, God, come in and change me. If there's not change in your heart, if there's not a love for Jesus, then I wonder if you're even saved. But there's a curtain that you've put up that's keeping you from that realization. And what I'm praying and believing today is that the Holy Spirit in your mind and your heart right now, he is ripping those curtains down and he's revealing them to you, whatever it is, whatever is keeping you from fully stepping into the promise and the life that God has for you. Because Jesus tore everything down that can actually separate you from God. It's done. The only thing left is what you create. It's what you've built from bottom to top. And today I'm believing that God wants you to tear those down. Whether you're a Christian, you're already a Christ follower, or maybe you came in today and you don't know him, or maybe you used to know him. Maybe there was a day that you walked with him and there were some glory days and some amazing moments and experiences you had with God and something happened and you got off track and now you've made some mistakes and and that's become a curtain and a veil and you just say, you know what, God could never take me back. I'm telling you today, you're the only one keeping you away from God. That door is wide open and he is inviting you in to experience him. Even if you've put a curtain up, God's love can break through that curtain. He'll never force you to step in. He'll never take you and make you step in but his love will penetrate that curtain. His love will get to your heart. His love will affect you. And that's why I believe right now, wherever you're sitting, wherever you are, 
there's something happening. Maybe all through today's experience, you've felt God's love. And this is the reason why Paul tells us in Romans 8. He says, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, no matter what you put up, his love is still coming for you. His love is still there. He is on pursuit for you. So you can keep throwing curtains up, but I'm telling you, you can't get away from his love. You can't stop it, you can't block it. It's up to you to tear that thing down and to take the step in, but his love is coming for you because he wants you, he desires you. He wants to walk with you in the cool of the day. He wants to know you, he wants to pour his life into you. And some today, your thought right now is, maybe you thought you were a good little Christian, doing all the right things, and maybe God's revealed some things and you're just, the Holy Spirit speaking and you're just like, man, I need to pull some stuff down. There are some curtains, there are some mindsets, there are some lies that I've believed that need to be torn down. And then I just believe some here today, wherever you are, maybe it's sin, maybe it's past, maybe it's heritage, that you just, you, for whatever reason, you've never fully stepped into God, into his presence, into knowing him, into that relationship and today, Today is that invitation. It's that invitation to step into that relationship. And what I wanna do is I wanna just simply lead you in a prayer. If that's you and you're, maybe you're coming back to God or maybe, maybe there is some compartments of sin, maybe it's a heritage thing and you just have always thought, man, I'm good, I'm okay. I, I was raised this way, I make good decisions, I have the right values, but I'm not really, I'm not really stepping in. I'm not really in the presence of God. I'm not really in a relationship. I'm not really being changed by God. And if that's you today, I just wanna lead you in a prayer. A prayer of surrender to God. A prayer of pulling down that curtain and exposing the lie that you've believed so that you can step in and experience the fullness of resurrection life today. So if that's you, wherever you are in that spectrum. I just want you to pray this prayer. So just bow your head and close your eyes. Wherever you are, whatever campus, or maybe you're in a home right now, I just want you to pray this prayer. You can repeat these words after me or you can pray your own prayer. But just pray, God, I wanna tear this curtain down. Whatever it is that separates me from you, right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, help me tear it down so that I can enter into, so that I can accept the invitation of Easter. I wanna be made new. I don't wanna be the old me. I wanna be a new me, full of your life and your joy. Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender my heart to you. And today I enter in to experience more of you in Jesus' name, amen. Hey Amen. real quick, I'm gonna ask you to do something pretty bold. Wherever you are, whatever campus you're at, or even if you're at home, if you just prayed that prayer with me, first time or maybe the hundredth time, if you just prayed that prayer, raise your hand boldly. Go ahead, if you look, 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 look around the room right now, every campus, look around the room. There are hands up everywhere of people that just pulled that curtain down and said, today I'm stepping into life. I'm stepping in to experience God fully. And that's what we're here to do today. In just a few minutes, you're gonna be given instructions on, on what to do next because we wanna know, we wanna help you. We wanna walk with you in this journey, whether it's the first time or the hundredth time, we don't care, man. This is just the beginning of what God wants to do in your life. So you're gonna get some directions in just a minute, but we're gonna sing a song. We're gonna end today just singing that this is all about Jesus. Everything that life is, it's all because of what Jesus did for us. So I'm gonna pray one more prayer. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Do not leave. I'm telling you, you do not wanna miss this final moment because we are gonna enter into God's presence. We're gonna worship him. Jesus, thank you for Easter. Thank you for today. Thank you that you, because of what sacrifice you made, we can enter in. We can step into you into a new life, into resurrection life. And today we sing it's all about Jesus because it is truly all about you. Everything is all about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
All right, you guys ready to sing? Come on, you ready to sing? All right, here we go. Let's do it.
what an incredible service. And listen, if you just made a decision to follow Jesus, let me encourage you right now to text I found hope to 97,000. If you do that, one of our staff members is going to contact you, but more importantly, it's going to give us an opportunity to walk with you. Because if we know anything, it's this. You can't do this walk with Jesus by yourself. And it's our hope that through this, we'll be able to connect and walk with you on this journey. And look, if you're watching this right now and you haven't already, make sure you press subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. That way you can stay up to date every single time that we go live. And also, if you need more information about how to give and continue to support ministry happening here at City Hope Church, you can either go online to cityhope.cc slash give, or we're actually going to throw up a text link for you to do that as well. But listen, thank you guys so much for watching. We love you. Can't wait to see you next week.